It's Friday night and it is weekender time once more and we have another jam-packed show filled with hobby goodness to take you through the weekend. But before all that, a quick announcement. Next week we have a special weekender show as we see the return of our annual awards where we take a look at the good and the great from 2022 uh, throughout all types of games and game accessories and let you know our top picks. On top of that, this week, one lucky viewer will be able the chance to win the Leagues of Votan Army set. Uh, to be able the chance to win, you need to pop a comment below and be a subscriber to the channel. And if you can do all the socially doobly-doo bits, that really helps us out as well. Otherwise, sit back, relax, because your weekend starts here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekender. I'm joined by Warren, Ben, and Shay this week. Hello, guys. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Shay, a.k.a. Amos. He is <laughs> he is our Northern Irish... Um, what, what do you call them dudes that live in the Dark Ages? In Amish. The, the Amish. Amish. The Amish. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Look, Shay, boy, every time I see you, man, I just think i, I want to go and get a wee plot of land out in the middle of and nowhere <laughs> and me and you yeah we'll we'll lift a barn together and move it to the other field and we'll do that every day we'll just move a barn <laughs> by hand from one field to the next you tell me there, there's not a more satisfying and fulfilling life purpose than that my man there is not not at all <laughs> I'm, I'm just having I'm, I'm having weird flashes of that uh did you ever see the comedy show where they were moving the Irish border closer to Dublin? They were just extending Northern Ireland. Moving <laughs> <laughs> the sign down the road by like 100 yards every week to see if anybody would notice. Yeah. <laughs> but like now that. we do it with barns. Now we do it with barns. <laughs> oh, dearie me, my. Well, how has our, how has our week been, Jerry? What, 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 what's new? What's exciting? What's going on in the world? Well, we kicked off uh, this week. Uh, well, I say we kicked off. We kicked off, but people have only seen it yesterday uh, with the first of our little vlogs on Blood and Plunder. Mm, um, yeah. As, as we're going to dive into the new Raise the Black starter set. Yep. Uh, so I've been building a lot of a lot of British grenadiers and, and soldiers and cavalry, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. I'm not sure how I'm going to get my cavalry onto a boat, but, uh, but yeah, that's where very, we're Very, very big gangplanks. That's mm. the, yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, I'm going to take us on a deep dive into historical accuracy here, but, but basically, Raise the Black now sets the time scale firmly in that of Black Sails. Is it is not, is not basically it? We're now. Series, so I have no idea. But oh, I say, yeah. It is, it is, Raise it the is Black Black Beard, 18th century though, stuff. So, well, if it's yeah. Blackbeard, then. Right. So, uh, Blackbeard so, and Maynard and stuff. Yeah. For for folk like me that um you know obviously reference the the historical documentary Black Sails, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> um, we can now relate directly um into that. So I uh, yeah, I believe that that does plant us bang in the uh, middle good, of that. Good, good I, I'll go one Johnson. step further. Yeah. The, I think the day before I was up at the studio uh, to film the. Uh, there was a new TV series had its first episode called "Our Flag Means Death," which yes, is a comedy yeah, yeah. about Steed Bonnet. Yeah, and he's he's one of the uh, pirate types that's kicking around. It's on uh, BBC. So, yeah. so there's yeah. more historical accuracy for you now. Well, who's Steve Bonnet? He's a new pirate I've never heard of. Uh, oh I, God, I, we're going down the pi <laughs> <laughs> the pirate segue. <laughs> uh, well, according to the historically accurate, "Our Flag Means Death," he was a mm -hmm. landowner who had a midlife crisis and decides to blow up his cushion. I want to be a pirate, a pirate now. instead. <laughs> Um, you see, that's because Shay he didn't have a barn. Exactly. <laughs> so if he had a barn, he'd have been occupied. You know, he would have been moving it back and forth from between the fields. So <laughs> it's got Hodor in it. So it does, it's quite yeah, be good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Cool. He gets to do something else except go Hodor and occasionally play some wicked beats and for, hold for the doors. kids. Yeah. Because yeah. he's yeah. a he was. A DJ, well, maybe he still is a DJ. I don't know. He well, is. I'm still quite enamored by Anne Bonnie. Yeah, mm. 
I think um, Bonnie's probably one of my favorite pirates ever. I think she kicks ass. Is I, she, I, is she I, a Bonnie wee lad? I have a soft spot for Mom Bonnie. No, I should <laughs> cut me a new one. I know. I know. Like, I know that destiny never will uh, has it for me and Am Bonnie to ever move a barn together. But you can't help but just wish. <laughs> That, that's true. Was she, the, was she the pirate? Every time she killed a bloke, she'd expose her breasts to go. You've just been killed by a girl. Because I know one of them did that. There were several. Oh, there were several there female go. pirates, and I knew it was just like rub salt in the wound. Not only are you bleeding out all over the deck, and I'm going to steal all your stuff. But I'm a lady. I'm waiting for that model to come out from uh, Fire. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to go! <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of others as well. So yeah, so people people will be able to. Follow us awesome. for the next four weeks as we build our people been really fleets enjoying it as together. Well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There Thank seems to be an awful lot of people really on board for uh, for the piratery. Uh, also, also this week we've got all space pirates in the world of forty k. We did, well. yeah, yeah. Um, so we tried the new Imperium Maledictum. Oh, so much RPG, fun! Um, so cool. from yeah. Cubicle Seven, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe is out today on the pdf i think so yeah like i think it's available kids do PDF, with their, yeah. their epubs and stuff when they, there'll be a, a physical book coming out later in the year as well uh but this is their new d100 system so it goes back to kind of if you remember the stuff from fantasy flight games and the like um looking back towards um you know dark heresy and that kind of stuff and also why i'm a fantasy role play which is you well, know, for, massive as well from them as well um but it was really good fun it was me uh you jerry and justin and we had some good fun uh there was I enjoyed maybe, myself, yeah. there may be voice modulation involved and uh yeah i channeled all of my victor Solspire from vermintide <laughs> to annoy justin constantly so <laughs> can i ask yes because there's a whole plethora of people out there in the world right now who um with all this hullabaloo from wizards of the coast they are now looking at other kind of RPG systems and things like that. Yep. What does a D20 system mean? And what does a D100 system mean? Like, does a D100 system mean that I just have one, one D100 dice? So a D100 is two D10s or a D or a percentile dice. So you have one that's like 10, 20, 30, and the other one is just the uh -huh. normal D10, as Jerry's showing off there. And in, in most cases with a D100 system, you'll be trying to roll under your value. So say that your strength was 47, you'd be trying to roll under 47 on a D100 dice. In some cases, you roll over, but those are sort of few and far between, between I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of the times it's done by levels of success, especially if you're looking at things like one fantasy role play. So say you rolled a 15. But you only one, use one type of dice in the whole you, game. You literally <laughs> just use a D10. Well, it depends. Uh, in mean, most cases. But. Call of Cthulhu. All your yeah, skill checks and bit, strength yeah. checks and stuff is all yeah. done with percentile. But then yeah. if you're in combat, you'll roll your percentile to hit, but then you may have a specific dice to roll for damage. So if you're mm -hmm. punching somebody, it'll be like a D3. If you're stabbing yeah. them up a D4, you know. And yeah, because yeah, this is what I was wondering. The I love fit in there. poly dice, yeah. right? Uh -huh. And I'm just wondering, like, what, what system lets me just use my variety and selection of poly dice? I, I, there's loads of them out there. It really comes down to... Like, does D&D &D let me use them all, or is it all just D20? D&D &D &D uses D &D everything. It uses your yeah. whole suite of dice. Pathfinder also does the same thing. Mm. You, uh -huh. you use every single dice in your collection. Tell us the not, so. Good luck finding it, by the way. Yeah. There are so, also a bunch of role play systems. I can't name them off the top of my head, but yeah, there's yeah. some where they use particular dice for stats. So mm -hmm. you may have a D4 in something or a D6 in something and, and stuff like oh, okay. that. So there are plenty of them out there. We put out actually um, an article a couple of weeks ago now when the OGL thing was all happening and stuff where I basically looked at a whole bunch of different role-playing games. So if you are interested in looking at something further afield and you don't want to dive into D&D &D or whatever, then you can uh, go and check out that. But i got to say, the stuff from Cubicle 7 is very nice. Also, watch out for Broken Weave, which uh, we're going to be talking about next week, mm -hmm. because all my days, it's like D&D, &D, but what? It's, it's gone huh? wrong. Uh, everything's wrong, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's very cool. Step one, roll your son. You yes. feel your son. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, that, that that's a whole other level of of mm. insanity, and it's it can be layered over the top of any other existing exactly yeah fantasy world that you're playing in. Mm-hmm. Fantasy just, apocalypse, yeah, fantasy apocalypse. Mm-hmm. The the apocalypse has come to fantasy and everything's gone horribly wrong, mm-hmm. especially when you're looking at speak thieves, birds <laughs> the size of humans with hands for feet that trade speak voice boxes and, and rag dragons. dragons. That's the way to go. It's just, it's just <laughs> odd. yeah. Definitely keep an eye out for that next week. Yeah, um, because it's a it's a peachy little thing, mm-hmm. uh, and also um, as far as the the d twenty bit goes because uh, we didn't really cover that it generally is a one dice roll you're just mm-hmm. rolling your d20 and then you're aiming for a, a target number um so yeah. it may mm-hmm. be 13 or more and then you're adding your whatever it is skill in whoever um i like percentile dice better than the d20 because you've got a broader range of numbers you can aim for i think it's, it's less binary in my opinion d20 I, mean, yeah, I find incredibly ones. swingy yeah Mm-hmm. You know, so I'll I'll miss 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 miss, miss 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um because you're you're you know it's it's not even a fifty fifty rule for me it's it's even when the odds are in my favour it's much worse yeah um, but at least I've got at least I've got one hundred numbers to aim for yes uh, but you know it's it's one of those Sh- things, Shay so. will win even more games against Jerry oh, yeah, it was all D twenty base percentile <laughs> dice percentile dice <laughs> <laughs> say nothing um. But yeah, yeah. So a lot, lot of interesting stuff coming from RPGs in the mm-hmm. in the future as well. Hopefully, happy um, days. Speaking of interesting things in the future, oh yes, thought, thought yeah. we'd give people a quick update. We mentioned this ooh, start of January, two weeks, yeah, couple yeah. Weeks ago, so yeah. it was the uh, Powerbound War Games guys have been running a not quite choose your own adventure, choose your next army um, thing through the living. The Living World on the Powerbombs website where people got to vote to choose what army they will start to work on uh, in the coming future. So I know some people go, oh, but you've not done Weavers yet and you've not done such and such and blah, blah, blah. Those are already locked in. This is for 2024 and beyond because you can't just go, we were going to start a new army. Here it is next month. Yeah. Uh, they need yeah. time to just work on it, illustrate Design it, it tool it, everything. So, yeah. Um, people had a choice of three, Dogs of War, um, Hell, and the it's Sorcerer Kings. Favorite. And the uh, the Sorcerer Kings won out. I have to say I'm probably not surprised in the end, despite my wanting of Dogs of War. Um, <laughs> the Indian slash Persian gin-based mm, army, yes. uh, cool. I think, has, has just got a lot of people on board. So there's been a, a bit more of information about it. Um, some of the concept and sort of the ideas about play style as well. Yeah. So it'd be fascinating to see where they go with that. Like you can have a whole, you know, and ride uh, around cringers. on cringers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it'd be fascinating to if see. Someone Obviously, doesn't paint it in that way. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> they're going to be painted in green and orange stripes. That it's, it's not even a, it's not even a thing. Man. Mm. It's not even a question as to whether or not somebody will. It's going to be a question of who won't. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that'll be fascinating. But uh, mm. I want to get my hands on the, the Greeks first. So oh, I God, mean, the yeah, city the states. states. Yeah. Not Greeks. It's going to be blind. <laughs> um, they should be full of stabby goodness. And we're, we should be doing some more conquest stuff, sort of March time, if people want to keep a, an eye on that in the future. Um, get, start to get some stuff on the table. Show off our path of conquest armies. <laughs> I've, I've done two. How's everybody else getting on? No, catch me up. <coughs> yep, we're getting there. Yep. Well, yeah, so we're looking forward to March. March, March may be a resurrection for some of these. And uh, yes, uh, well, you, you are coming, coming up to the spring to clean challenge yeah. now. So that's true. Yeah, so that I'll probably kick off around St Patrick's Day. I believe uh, we'll probably launch it's, it on on the seventeenth because it's the Friday, and then spring clean starts on the Monday. Oh, happy days! So, Launching on St Patrick's Day. What so a great launch way it, to launch it because we're not going to do anything on St Patrick's Day other than that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to remember that. <laughs> that's entirely up to you. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Right. That's I think that's enough updates. Shall we have a quick look at our indie of the week? Do you want to? Go on. Go on. I know you want okay. to. I can see you, Warren. Indie of the week. Oh wow. Always surprising. I just wanted to change it up a little bit. <laughs> this very, is very sultry. This is what <sighs> gets me up in the morning. Um, you know, I just, uh, uh, you know, when we come to filming day, 
for weekenders. I I am this excites me. It just ooh. You never know. So I wanted to sure. give it. I wanted to give it a true kind of oh rumble of love like an elephant. So yeah, I'm excited. Who have we got this week? So this week it's a little ditty tiny little indie. Mm-hmm. It's statuesque miniatures, um, and big name for a small indie. Who <gasps> does he make stuff out of pebbles? No, but it feels they just that way. Paint things incredible. It looks that way. Oh, oh, these are <laughs> incredible. Yeah, they're so fantastic. There, there are two sort of ranges. Uh, there are little STL slash printed accessories of uh, female heads that work for sort of sci-fi. They come in a variety of scales. We'll look at those first because it, it is very brief. Um, I've cracked open the heroic scale, but they come in heroic pulp and fine. <gasps> Depending yep. on the model you're upgrading them for, you've got variants. Uh, but mm-hmm. people are always going, there's not enough female fighters, warriors, especially in sci-fi games where you don't yeah, be able are. to, to yeah. lug around <laughs> armor and stuff like that. Uh, so you can get a whole variety of, of heads to add in or modulate your stuff, including things like creepy, I'm going to say aliens. Be aliens, there's not there. I mean, they're not right, they're not more cybernetic, yeah, yeah. 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 Depends Perhaps on the good color. for your female space marines that you might want to drop you into see, the mix. So. I have completely <laughs> come around to this idea based it's on historical accuracy, yeah. right? <laughs> and I'm and you only need to go a few years back. I am going to do a chapter called the Gaddafi Greats, and you see, and <laughs> that, I see one. heads in this with berets up. There, that is the female soldiers of the Gaddafi Great Chapter of the forty-first millennium. Right there, I think that'll be great. I think that'll be great. These are lovely heads. I've got to say, yeah. I like them ones in the middle, Jerry. If you were going to do a Wakanda kind of a thing, that'd be yeah. kind of cool. The Dora Marge, yeah, you could. Do well, like if you there, took yeah. a, if you took a Space Marine army, right, and um. Kind of gave it um, uh, an African an African vibe uh, mm-hmm. or whatever because they're yeah. very kind of North African kind of heads. They would pass for uh, you know for Egyptian and all and all sorts there. Obviously, when you start getting down to very very small heads, yeah, you, know, you, you can kind of do anything you yeah. want with them. Yeah, but yeah, to yeah. try and stay within the theme of it, mm. you know, you could do some awesome um, kind of Egyptian themed um, uh, space marine kind of stuff with that. Or, like I said, a, like a Wakanda kind of African warrior esque kind of, of thing. The tribal shields that you get on um, oh, South African yeah. tribes where they're sort of geometric red, white, and black mm-hmm. patterns and stuff. Do that for mm. the chapter markings. <laughs> Enjoy doing that. Yeah. You won't. But yeah, you've got your, your they're very heavily sci fi, but there's enough in here that are just um, untouched, shall we say, yes. unblemished yeah, by, yeah. by implants that so we could happily put them go into our into saga. The, other things exactly shield maidens at google or, yeah there's uh, more gaddafi greats there yeah. so like i say that they, they do them in a variety of scales so uh you can pick them up for whatever one you want or if you actually have one of those 3d printer type things then you can just pick up the stl file and print your own yep mm-hmm. uh, which is really nice however uh, the reason i was thinking about statuesque recently was simply because of uh, I've been watching a lot of uh, weird video games recently. Uh, there's a company called Kill Monday Games who do two, uh, Franbo and uh, Little Misfortune, and they're both eerily creepy uh, with really strange art style. And I was thinking, I've I've seen things like that before, odd stuff that could you know that speaks to me on a just a character level, mm-hmm. uh, and you. You look at things like this. So they've done four Kickstarters, three are at the bottom of the garden, and then there's one that's the um, Yellowfield House ghosts. The ghosts of Yellowfield yeah. House. Yeah. Uh, and they all kind of, you know, theoretically work together. They're 28 mil ish figures. So um, some are bigger, some are smaller, but they have this really eerily creepy um, Johan Vasquez, Tim Burton esque sort of. Mm-hmm illustration and uh, uh, style to the, the sculpt. No game or anything with this. So that would be the big question as to, obviously I need them in my life. 
but what am I going to do? How <laughs> am I justifying it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I haven't quite worked out a way to justify it yet, uh -huh. uh, but I'll, I'll find one. Don't worry. I will find one. Uh, but I just absolutely adore the the style of the sculpting. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really nice. Even just that, I mean, all this down there is clean them up, buff them, and then hit them with black shoe polish. Yeah. Uh, and it just to gorgeous. define the details, yeah. I'm going, that's just really nice. What about a Burrows and Badgers proxy? That's what you, could, you, could, you could use it for that. Yeah, it'd be mm -hmm. a pretty decent game because it's obviously skirmish level stuff. So you could always run around with that. But uh, yeah, they remind me of a game. Now, they wouldn't be, well, they would be a fit in the game in how it ended up. House Raiders. So yes, Home Raiders. Yeah, Home Raiders. That's the one. Um, I still consider Home Raiders one of the greatest lost opportunities um, in miniature gaming history. Um, I, I, but it, I, I still hope that TT Combat will do something more with it in the in the near future. But we'll, well they need to go back and 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 start because yeah. the, its yeah. charm was its one to one ratio. Yes. Okay. Which is, I think, um, where this kind of stuff might. Yeah, it, well, uh, so. but it lost that charm the moment it started bringing in Paolo Parenti's penguins and things like that. <laughs> because like penguins can be up to six feet tall. The, the Egyptian so it, penguins. Yes, yeah. so it absolutely lost its charm. Mm -hmm. um, very, very quickly it lost its way. Um, mm -hmm. it, it really, really should have stuck to that guiding principle of everything being one-to-one -one scale in it. Lily, Lily, That's why Lily, this Lily, doesn't Lily. fit, but it reminds me of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The thing that was really nice about this is one of the things that's quite cool is they don't have a game behind this. No. But what Statuesque have done is that they've kind of tied a narrative into everything. Mm -hmm. So when they do the Kickstarters, there's always like little poems and stories. And because it ties to the idea of like these toys were left at the bottom of the garden. And so they've kind of animated and come to life. And so they have this little tiny world there, which I kind of think is perfect for narrative skirmish gaming and things you could use this with seven tv for example and just kind of make well, seven tv do, kind of just cool, doing a kids uh, tv show exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. something like the moment something really creepy something, something like with the moment the one at the moment jeez <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the movements yeah no there's, there's nothing wrong with the movements the movements are about to make a giant comeback that's that's what this is all about right. so okay. <laughs> lord, lord getting ahead of the curve yeah, with his movement love um but yeah every single time these have come out they they get snapped up so quickly on on fundraising and stuff um and it's just been really gorgeous seeing the different collections come to life and just telling random little stories um because it always seems like uh, effectively that the guys at such are like um well the guy at such is like i really want to make this so they just go ahead so, and do so it. i made it yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the cloth cats and the cloth kittens and the uh the wolves as well yeah. just, they do look like something that you know should come from a children's illustrated book. There, you feel like yeah. you feel like somebody has sat down and gone. I was reading this to my kid. And I thought yeah. I'll make a model of it, mm -hmm. but no, yeah, well, it's yeah. just. Cute I've meets, seen people. I've surreal. seen people use these as um, board game components. So yeah. they'll they'll pick up sort of quirky, pulpy style games, and they'll use these as the markers in their games and stuff, which I think is a really nice idea. Which I yeah. think it was a. Spiral bound book board game for kids. stuffed fables. Stuffed fables would be really good with these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the bunny. I just, I really, I really adore it, and even things like that. The toy with little troll. toy troll. That's amazing. <laughs> who, who looks like could be some sort of troll? Could be yeah. some sort of weird fat bunny. Don't know what's going on with it, but it's that whole ragdoll feel to it. Mm -hmm. And look, his his tail stapled to his bottom like Eeyore. <laughs> pin the tail on the troll mm -hmm. and away it goes so yeah it's just one of these where it's it's a miniature line that i need and at some point i'll worry about why i need it mm -hmm. in the future um because they're just so quirky and cute and even just mm -hmm. as a painting opportunity yeah just doing to that do something a bit different yeah mm -hmm. i don't know if i would go for the stone look i, I think i think you go for I, the fluffy toys i, I think i'd probably yeah send myself uh, up the wall painting very thin lines to get the fabric look <laughs> on the highlights. Um, yeah, actually. Because, yeah. you know, if, if you're going to do something, why not just really mm -hmm. torment yourself over it? Uh, this is the way. There's the, yeah, this is the way. The, uh, the little woos. So, <laughs> I mean, those combined with the cloth 
Klaus Katz are just great. Mm-hmm. And the whole concept of just this interesting sculpts, but all one piece metals, no, no construction required. It's just get it clean up and, and paint away. Yeah. And yeah. you can do as much or as little to them as you want. And I imagine mm-hmm. if I go hoping, there's probably some fascinating paint jobs out on the interwebs for them as well. Mm. But I, I just, I just love them so much. They're just, so cute. they are great. They are great. Yeah. And then there's the, where's our ghosts? Oh, there's our stars. We'll, we'll come, to, we'll those, come yeah. to them. In a <laughs> Twill of the wisps. Oh, I mean, they just, um, they just scream. What was that bit in Hellboy? The tooth fairies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, they look really yeah. cute until you get up close and then they'll have your arm off. <laughs> they eat you. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely twisted. Love it. They are superb, aren't they? Yeah. Beautiful piece of design. Absolutely beautiful piece of design. And the ghosts of Yellowfield House, there only are a couple, but. Oh, come on. Yes. But our little ghost with a big book. And are these metal or many yeah, are they, resin? These, these are all metal. All metal ones. Oh, so. I like they'll, that. They'll have a nice, satisfying heft. To yeah, them. there'll be a heft to these. <laughs> yeah. Got to love a bit of heft. But, uh, yeah. I think, I think more than anything, it's the painting opportunities with stuff like this. Because it'll mm. be something that you've potentially not tried before because you've got such big, large, flat surfaces to, yeah. to work with. I want to know how they achieved that wee granite effect. I think that's flipping gorgeous. I, I have a sneaking suspicion. Stippling, a lot yeah. of stippling, yeah. stippling yeah. layers. Mm-hmm. I mean that that has a sort of I'm going to hit this with um, wash on the end of a toothbrush. Yeah, it's like just like flick it. it. Mm. <laughs> but those ghosts, those three ghosts are just like gorgeous. absolutely spanking. Yeah, they're lovely because mm. you're just looking at them going, well, mm. here's a Scooby Doo mystery waiting to be solved. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially yeah. Mr. Swither. Uh-huh. Me, oh, I'm definitely a ghost. Can you tell? I've got a bed sheet. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah, so they've they've got the the whimsical. They've got the uh, uh, sort of the, the add on head bits and pieces, and then they have these three able space men, women. Um, and again, twenty eight mil figures, mm-hmm. really nice. Again, s- simple find sculpt but when you've got games yeah. like um stargrave at the moment mm-hmm. things like that where you occasionally want to have just civilian sort of engineers in mm-hmm. yeah, around yeah. um or doing the the lord's own work with grenade launcher uh, <laughs> that's a sure. flamethrower well i'm just i'm just thinking of shay and his all right his, his <laughs> album, his <laughs> everywhere. I, whether there's civilians around or not uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't think you were acceptable accepting them casualties. i think you were hoping for them but, you know <laughs> no. but having having these three as a sort of a ground crew just working around yeah, uh, yeah. a ship uh, just sets it off really well yeah, they really used nice. to do like a set of kind of pulpy characters um, with kind of Cthulhu vibes and that kind of thing, but I think they've taken they're, them. Yeah, yeah, they're not on the not yeah. on the site anymore. So it's it's just the uh, the three fingers crossed they come back. Starport. But, uh, well, yeah. um, there's always the option to come back to them and and re reinvigorate the yeah. uh, the ranges but, by the medium so, of of the Kickstarter. Stat- statuesque are originally. I think this, this was meant you know, quite a few years ago now, and I think their models are still available from different companies. They used, they did a series of their own take on the Hero Quest characters. Mm-hmm. So they did the wizard, the the barbarian, the dwarf, and the elf. <laughs> I can't remember which companies now got them. I think I can't. It, maybe North Star potentially or something as that as, as sold them. Oh no, Crooked Dice, Crooked Dice. Have oh, them. that would make sense. Yes, yeah. they have them because they put them as part of their. Fantasy, fantasy adventurers range for 7TV fantasy. That was it. Um, so, yeah, you can still find some of their stuff available from different uh, producers and things. And it's very nice looking, going to check out those Hero Quest ones. They're very cool. So, yeah. there you are. Mm. Our little compact and bijou indie of the week for you. Mm. Happy uh, days. Miniatures. And if you have any cunning ideas for games that I can shoehorn them into, mm-hmm. uh, I will shoehorn them into anything I can when I finally get them, to be fair, you know, by hook or by crook. <laughs> People may see them turning up in Silver Bay now, for all they know. But, you know. Hey, anyway. That would actually be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so You never know what's inside those rag dolls. Human heart, mm-hmm. you say. Oh, well, what a shame. <laughs> right. Uh, we're going to have a quick swish. And when we come back, we'll be jumping into the news. 
coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. It's the Muck News. <laughs> all right, we are back for the news, and we're going to be kicking things off with some World War II, Ben. Yeah, we are. Mm. Uh, so the folks over at uh, Battlefront Miniatures have uh, talked about their newest supplement book that's going to be coming out for Flames of War, going back to World War II this mm -hmm. time, rather than exploring uh, Team Yankee and the Cold War gone hot. Uh, but still, Soviets are involved, uh, and now we're going right to the tail end uh, of the late war with Berlin, Soviet, and the forces of the Eastern Front in 1945. Um, so this is a new book that's going to be coming out very soon, uh, sort of start of February and throughout the rest of the month. And this is going to cover the Soviet Red Army uh, and also that sort of fight towards Berlin and in Berlin during 1945. Um, it's going to come with all the bits and pieces that you you tend to imagine would appear in one of these supplements. So you're going to get all the historical detail um, alongside painting guides and all that kind of good stuff as well, including um, scenarios and themed missions and everything else in between. Um, the other big thing that's coming out as well is the new starter set, which you can actually pre-order from Store on Tabletop right now. Actually, this looks incredible. Like yep, so this set. is Clash of Steel which is going to come with your usual mix of both tanks and infantry, as you would imagine. Uh, and There's fighting... nothing usual but a Yag Tiger. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, fighting in the heart of the city as the Soviets pushed back against the German army. And all that kind of good stuff. But Watching the Reichstag burn. I've always wanted exactly. to do yeah. the Reichstag in 15 mm. mil. Because I I, I scaled it out at one point, and I think it would it would fit on a six by four along the long edge. Right, and fifty okay. mil, it will fill most of that side. Is the well, one I from Sarissa? Is that twenty eight mil? Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Right. It was somebody did a three D printed one years ago, but oh, okay. I, cool. yeah. I think in the grand scheme, I things are probably better off just breaking out the wooden dowel. And, and well, the interesting thing about that is you you have a couple of scenarios there you can do. Mm -hmm. So you could do the whole pre-war Adolf and his cronies going in and burning the place down. Um, uh, so you do that as a kind of like a skirmish game. Allegedly. Oh, sorry. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. Oh, yeah. Don't want to get done by, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by his lawyers. Yeah. And then you could follow that up with, uh, yeah, with the siege of Berlin. Then hyping um, mad right now. <laughs> So yeah. it's yeah, uh, it'd be really cool seeing which way it go, which way people go with it. Do, do you have a shot of the contents of that box, Jerry? Uh, unfortunately, we didn't no. have one in the preview. Um, but if you click on that starter set link, maybe it'll <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll have added one because I can't remember if we had one on our store or anything. Uh, we'll find out in a second. Oh, there we go. Oh, Boom. that's the on tabletop store. Exactly. Yay. Uh, I said, very easy to get your hands on. Plug. That, but, uh, plug. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What uh, I love about this set, look at the amount of stuff you get in it this time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It is really cool. That is, that is filth. That is what that is. <laughs> that is. Starter box that pleases me yeah. massively. Every Everyone oh, pulling out all it, are you, are you looking at what's on the German side, Che? I know, obviously, <laughs> you're, you're just focusing on the Soviet, but you're going to be going up against no. three Panthers, Jag Tiger, and then Stug. two, two, well, they're the Panzer IV uh, 70s. So, are they, uh, so they're not Stugs? No, late war, they just went, what's the point in putting turrets on things? Uh -huh. we, we can get more vehicles out the door if we save and just stick massive guns. Although... It is just the. They're not actually the classified as a tank, then. That, that's no, that's yeah. actually a um, tank hunter or, or tank hunter or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I was listening recently to um, a chap on the Joe Rogan podcast talking about the current situation in Ukraine, and it it ties very much into this because it, it's. Um, I don't know if you're watching the the latest documentary about um, Putin. And the the last kind of fifteen years or so on the run up to the the events that we're seeing today, um, but one of the interesting things uh, about it is, is that up until Ukraine, uh, the invasion of Ukraine, um, in in recent years we had thought that there had been a dynamic change in the the Russian the Russian army in terms of their training and capabilities, um. 
especially from uh, from actions and things like that that they took in around the Middle East and uh, in North Africa. Um, but you, Ukraine has demonstrated that it was only a thin veneer of uh, of what looks like a, a an upscaling in the, in their training capability. Um, so the the reality is that Russia is now looking at uh, looking at its um, strategy for Ukraine in uh, in almost exactly the way that it's had to look at its strategy for every conflict that it has fought in in modern times. So it is literally now um, looking like it's just going to come down to um, throw men at it until the until the problem goes away. Um, so we we are at that stage. So this this next phase of the conflict, we could start to see something very similar to what you what what was seen in that World War II um, from there, and then obviously what what, what happened in um, Afghanistan and and whatnot. That it is literally a case of very ill-equipped men and very l- poorly trained men are now just going to be uh, thrown at it. So you, you, you're talking in the region, maybe half a million, um, uh, up to potentially a million, um, wow. because it is. It it looks like it's a fight that they just can't afford to lose. Um, I, I think it was a massive strategic area for them to start it in the first place. But I when you watch it. the documentary, <laughs> you can it. see the, you can see a lot of the the ins and outs of it. But it is very it's very interesting and very telling um, uh, the, that um, everything changes and nothing changes in the world. <laughs> Here comes the new boss, uh, same as the old boss. Yep. Yeah. Well, you can change things up a little bit uh, with the uh, Berlin Soviet uh, releases, because if you don't want to go for Clash of Steel and you don't want to dive in with another player, you can also pick up a solo essential starter force um, for the Soviets. Um, so this is their M4 Sherman forward detachment, uh, and that you might have a lot of people going, Sherman, what the? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but of course, you know, someone's got to lend them armor, right? So, <laughs> uh, and that's what you get with this one again. And I- I'm fairly sure that John has managed to um, get his sort of feelers into everything that's happening at Battlefront because from, from from since John said, where's the infantry in my starter forces? There have been infantry in all of the starter forces since yep. then. And so I think that somebody it. has listened to <laughs> yeah, Because it has to be there. You know, it's yeah. it's a crucial part of the combined of arms. objectives and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, and, it, and it just, um, it, it's just so much more interesting mm-hmm. To uh, control a force it, that, that a, has a soft, fleshy bit, well, uh, you know, it, it, it just you know it adds so much to the enjoyment of uh, mm-hmm. uh, of, of you know of your your yeah. tactical thinking when you have that uh-huh. soft, fleshy bit there that you have to, to <laughs> use. You, uh, you, you say yeah. that, but in flames of war, they're the hardest thing to kill. Yeah. The infantry are things. still there long after the armor is exposed. You know, do you know what? Yes, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely it's, true. Take um, them in somewhere, then never leave. Never leave. Yeah. And then we have other people. But there's a really nice spread of um of stuff in there because it's not just infantry and armor. There's yes, the, so many different vehicles. There's yeah. the, the caddies at the back for a bit of rocket artillery. There's mm-hmm. uh, anti anti air half tracks for yep. whenever your opponent has taken aircraft and anti infantry half tracks for when they haven't. Mm-hmm. Because a bucket of dice per per half track there <laughs> is still a bucket of dice per so half track. And Katusha looking things, yeah. Exactly the way to go. And, and, yeah. Well, it's the the I think it's like an American half track with the anti air quad on it. Oh yeah, yeah, the back. Um, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. they'll, they'll be like four to six dice each, depending on what the, the gun is, because um, mm-hmm. they're always great ways of doing it. Then tank um, hunters and and obviously Sherman's as a sort of a, a mainline tank. Yeah. So there's a there's a bunch of other stuff coming out um, throughout the month, but obviously we'll reveal those as they come up as part of their store um, in the news and all that kind of good stuff. One of the things that I did want to mention though is this new Ace Campaign Pack. Ooh. So this um, works like Ace Campaign Packs of the of the past, where it comes with a bunch of cards and all that kind of good stuff um, for telling almost like a, a narrative campaign on the tabletop. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want to play out you know, exactly as things happened, you can kind of dive in and play out a proper narrative campaign using cards that will allow you to add proper characters into your armies and sort of watch um, them develop and grow. Yeah. And so it's get like shot a, in the head. 
Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a way to build a sort of RPG element into your campaign, which I think is a really cool way of doing things. Uh, and we know that they've done the same thing in the past for uh, a bunch of their other theatres of war. Um, and uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be picking these up and uh, using it to run their own campaigns in stores and clubs and, and all that kind of good stuff. So oh, yeah, a nice selection of stuff there from Battlefront, I think. So. Grabbing them, Shay, are you? Maybe. 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 <laughs> <something. laughs> Sorry, you're, you're sticking with slightly, bolt action to begin with, are you? Yeah. Stick I'm, with bigger. I'm, I'm collecting bolt action, but every time Battlefront bring out a new Soviet box, I'm like, oh. It's only about time. Oh, that, that resolve will weaken. Shane might also get uh, distracted by the ne- next thing we're going to be talking about as well. So, mm. uh, well, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> many, many things coming from Osprey. Yeah, so um, we talked about the fact that um, Joseph A. McCullough is going to be doing a whole bunch of um, games throughout the year and supplements for the graves and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but on top of that, Osprey Games are also going to be releasing four new wargaming books this year as well. Uh, one of them is a supplement. The, the other three are full-on games. The first one of these is The Doomed. We've talked about this before, so I won't mm. uh, gild the lily on it too much, but this is a horror-hunting uh, skirmish game set in a apocalyptic future. Um, if you like kit bashing and converting, definitely one to check out. Um, we talked about it, I think it was last week on the show. Yes. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about that, uh, make sure to go and watch last week's show and we dive into a bit, a bit more detail there and talk about the sort of things that are coming for that. But the other one, oh my God, this one's amazing. So this Leshen? is a war transformed. That is effectively a lesson, yeah. So, <laughs> so a war transformed is set during World War One in the Doggerland, and it is it, it goes in a different direction from your classical kind of pulpy World War One mm. adventures in that it doesn't delve into Cthulhu and all that kind of Lovecraftian stuff, but it goes down the folk horror route. Um, so you're sort of fighting out there on the Doggerland, and things get a little bit weird. Um, so think say, for example, the silver bayonet, almost, mm. but tie it into World War I, uh, where you have all your beleaguered troops fighting on the front, but then other stranger things get added into the mix as well. So you have all sort of things like witches and devils and imps and sprites and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, um, joining your force, of, but also hunting you down. Yeah, so, yeah. less undead slash yes. horror, that silver bayonet uh-huh. is sort of more around uh-huh. zombies and werewolves and vampires. Um, this is more the the, the mythical stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pre- prehistory madness kicking uh-huh. off. If people are wondering where the Doggerland front is, it's just yeah. off the low countries. Yes. So <laughs> the Doggerland was above was above the water once. It just disappeared <laughs> between yeah. uh Yeah, because this is what I was gonna say. It looks a bit dry for Doggerland. Yeah. Well, don't worry, it, it came back. And yeah. with it was all of a sudden was uh, Bring forth uh, the puddles. Yeah. A, a lot of other things that uh, people oh. had forgotten slash Mm. Um, hope to never see again. The other, the other nice thing about this is that similar to the Doomed, this is very much one of those games that's going to be coming with that kind of vibe of kit bashing and converting. So you'll be wanting to pick up kits like the new plastics and things from War Games Atlantic, mm. dropping yeah. them into the mix as your classical World War One troopers, but then also throwing other quirky things into there as well and uh, having fun with it. Maybe you too will have a lovely uh, spot-eyed dog with a gas mask. With on. gas mask on, so, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, so the next one, uh, the next game that they're going to be bringing out is something that I think Shay will quite like. So this is with hot lead and cold steel. So this is their new mass battle American Civil War war game. Um, they are not doing anything by halves with this one. This is, as they've specifically said in the blurb for it, big fights on the tabletop. Uh, there's no skirmishes here. <laughs> mm. uh, so you're going to be able to dive in and play this uh, from Arthur van der Steer. And is it all going to be square based? Is there any pictures of what a battle looks like? Or uh, no, there, not there's yet. Nothing but, uh, about this yet beyond the yeah, beyond yeah. the fact we know it's mass battle. Yes, um, uh, I can't remember what they. This would be them. this. This might be your um, take us right back full circle to what do you call the wee company that does the the plastic cutout acrylic? Wow, fun! Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, <laughs> like if it is really really big battle. Um, I don't know about do, you, but yeah. I don't fancy painting that. So it's um, they, they've, they've said, yeah, they've they said they kind of want to go down the route of big divisional company size battles with large forces marched across the tabletop. You know, plenty of cotton wool smoke and all that mm. kind of good stuff that we yeah. talked about. <laughs> I wonder how. Um, 
it must also, be of a what, similar size to Absolute Emperor then. Probably. The, the other thing they've talked about is that they want to try and make it um, accessible, but also like fun for veterans. So like veteran war game is in that respect. Mm. Um, so they they want to try and make it so it's big, huge battles, but it won't take you like six, seven hours to play a game kind of thing. Sure. So they are trying to make it so it's easy. Do those battles take a weekend? To play, well, I mean, that you, if you want to make a proper event of it, that's probably the way to go, I think. But yeah, yeah but what I'm saying is, like, you know, if they can, if they can bring that down to, mm-hmm. you know, three hours or whatever, you know, well, that yeah, that'll that's, be that's a, that'll perfect. be really really interesting yeah. to see how they do that. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully, we'll get a better look at the book um, as it comes out later this year and, mm. and dive into a little bit more detail. Obviously, you know, Shay excited to buy a little bit of American Civil War recently as we oh, talked yes. about on XLBS and things. So yeah. <laughs> So this could be really good fun. Uh, and then finishing things off, uh, we also have a new book, a new supplement coming out for Bolt Action. Um, so this um, kind of caps off the Italian campaign that they've been doing with Warlord over the last little while. Uh, and Tough Gut kind of dives into uh, the last sort of dying moments of that conflict in Italy as they kind of free it from German control and all that kind of good stuff. So watch out for that uh, because I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of new miniatures and everything from Warlord at the same time. So, yeah. I, I like the fact they've gone with tough gut for it. Yes. Because the first book <laughs> was The Soft Underbelly. It was, yep. Italy, the Soft <laughs> Underbelly of Europe, and then um, yeah. the, the head point were not so soft anymore. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, these chaps are dug in. But, it's yeah. squeaky <laughs> when you start getting into certain yeah. places. But, mm. Yeah. Uh, fascinating stuff from Osprey. Also interesting. Shutting it out. Yeah. Not all of them are blue books, so uh, yep, The yeah. Doomed and Doggerland are both mm-hmm. full-on sort of war games rather than little exactly. soft cover uh, yep. book series. So. Something for everyone, I think. Yeah, nice and mix. there's even, even more announcements coming out from them soon as well, including new board games and that kind of stuff as well. So watch out for it. Mm. So, yeah. No, a blast <clears throat> from my past. Oh my God, yes. Ooh. Possibly the best version of Robin. I think so. Yeah. Man. So yeah, so this is a new set of Robin Hood miniatures from Crooked Dice. Uh, they have been uh, working uh, with one of their sculptors to create this amazing collection of miniatures based on. Hopefully, is that on the BBC Robin Hood? No, this yeah. is the Rob. Well, yes, but this is the very but old Robin of Sherwood. Robin of Sherwood, the one from the eighties yeah. with her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, That's so this cool. these were sculpted by Mark Evans based on the designs that people will know and love from the Robin of Sherwood TV show. Uh, They're split down into two sets. So in the first set, you've got Robin of Sherwood. Which one do you paint? Spoilers. Uh, Alongside Marion and Much. (laughs) Obviously the uh, the first one. Uh, And then in the second set, you've got uh, Little John, Tuck, Will Scarlet, and The Moor. Uh, that can be added into your uh, your games. So if you want to dive in and put together a band of merry men uh, about to rob from the rich and give to the poor, obviously in the service of Hearn the Hunter, because, mm. you know, you're not just doing it for your own ends. You're doing it oh, because no, no, no. a big, weird, mythical spirit in the forest told you to. <laughs> Have they shown a Hearn yet? They haven't, but I'm really hoping that we do get one. Because I mean, if be not, I've got a knight who says knee. But that would be Which perfect would for it, actually. Yes, yeah. it's just, right on the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll teach people. Uh, but yeah, so this is a new set that's coming out. I, I put them in because Robin of Sherwood is probably one of my favourite versions of the oh god, yeah. yeah, of the of the myth that's been done on TV. So um, yeah, really cool. Shame that it only had the run that it did, but I think they did a really good job with it mm. um, when it was out as well. So yeah, it's great, really um, nice models. They really are. I'm. I'm. It's uh, very tempting. Well, I'm trying to stop myself from buying them. Um, <laughs> See, I'm trying to think back. I. I was. Uh, uh, I was hooked on watching Robin Hood whenever I was a kid, mm-hmm. and it used to be, and it was on the. Uh, it was on the BBC um, or whatever. Yes, uh, and it's got to be this one, 1984, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 1986, because yeah. that'll be the one just before. Yeah, I was at high school at that point. So Kate Bush sung the uh, theme tune. No, it was Clement. It was oh, Enya. yes, it was Clannad. Sorry, yes. Yeah, Clannad Clan did all of the music. It was all hunting yes. Celtic music, especially whenever they were in the, the forest with Hearn creeping yes. around. Yes, yeah. that was it. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, it was, it hang was on. It might have been made Marion and her merry men in 1989. Right. So um, That is also a very good, good kids' TV show. Dan <laughs> and um, yes. Tony Robinson. Tony Robinson was the yes. show of Nottingham. And it's really funny. Even now, it's great. Mm. <laughs> if, if you say so. 
There's lots of jokes. <laughs> there's, lo- there's lots of jokes in there that are, are obviously I didn't get as a kid that you do now as an adult. So yeah. Oh. Um, but yeah, in in addition to the uh, two sets of um, Robin Hood miniatures, mm-hmm. they also put together a new set of resin terrain as well, so you can get yourself the Shrine of Evil. Um, so if you want to, you know, maybe use this in some Robin Robin Hood gameplay, you can do. But also, this would obviously fit into pretty much any kind of fantasy war game or mm. role playing game that you could think of. I could see Conan battling his way through that stone arch, kicking the ass of Snake Men or something as he uh, goes to kill some vile priest uh, down in the depths. Poor Snake Men. Yeah. Their only crime was having no limbs. Goddamn Snake Men. Snake Men and Kenku. I hate them. I hate them so much. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Great so, yeah, stuff. Two- it's nice to see more stuff coming for uh, Seven TV as well, mm-hmm. branching out. It's really cool. Yeah. Obviously, doing everything that's so so good about uh, kind of classic old old school TV shows. So, yeah. I imagine we'll definitely see uh, Sir Guy of Gisborne and oh, the, yeah. the, they the got rest of that, the, yeah. uh, I, the Nottingham contingent coming. I think those point. are going to sell like hotcakes. So, so yeah. Great. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, there, there are so many um, games out there at the moment as well that sort of cover that time period. Yeah, uh, yeah. which means there's really no reason not the to have them. War. I suppose, yeah. Yeah. To, but, yeah. But cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, moving from uh, hunting um, the uh, minions of the sheriff of Nottingham to hunting monsters in feudal Japan, uh, we also have the pre-orders going up. Or and kind of like their own little kind of crowdfunding campaign from Black Sight Studios for Hametsu. So Hametsu is a game that I've been covering for the last couple of weeks, and it is a samurai monster hunting miniatures game, which is cooperative. So you dive in, and as a group or individual, individually, mm-hmm. you can build a gang of samurai monster hunters, and then you dive into scenarios which kind of flow and evolve over time, a little bit like some of their other skirmish games that they've done in the past, like Yafsiger and Don't Look Back and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Basically, what you do is you'll make your characters in a kind of role-play sense. You'll build up your sort, your sort of warriors for use on the tabletop. And then when you dive into actually playing the game, there's three different stages to how a mission plays out. So you start in stealth, where you're kind of sneaking around through the forests of feudal Japan. And then once you've sort of killed enough characters or whatever, and you've managed to defeat some of the Oni, maybe some of them will get alerted and that kind of stuff as well. You'll then dive into a clash with them and you'll be fighting battles and that kind of stuff. And then at, towards the end of the game, things will trigger what's called like a boss fight. And then a big, huge, monstrous creature will burst into the clearing or something. And that is the target that you'll then have to take down. And so the whole sort of focus of this is based around these hunters going out from their little conclaves in fields of Japan into this almost post-apocalyptic world that's happened where sort of magic has seeped into everything and sort of only or all over the place and all that kind of good stuff. And you're going to be working together as, as the miniatures you can see there, kicking ass, taking names, um, developing your characters, getting stronger, getting more equipment and uncovering the story as well behind why this magical sort of post-apocalypse happened uh, in Japan at the time as well. Um, the, they're going to be bringing out the core rule book alongside a bunch of miniatures. Um, they can be sort of grabbed through 3D printing and all that kind of good stuff as well. Although, of course, they've kind of made this so that you can grab any miniatures that you want because there are so many good samurai miniatures out there. I think a lot of the stuff from Zenit would be really, really good for this. Uh, I think that'd be a nice, uh, a nice option for folks. And of course, Gray for now, and uh, the Test of Honor Rangers also would be Bushido. really good for it. So yeah, oh, Bushido, of course, would be great, especially with the whole especially kind of fantasy vibe going on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then, in addition to the core rules, which seem really quick and easy to play through, and the miniatures, they've also got a campaign built into the main book, which is called mm-hmm. The Wolf and the Devil, which allows you to play through a full-on campaign straight away with your friends. Um, without having to buy separate supplements and all that kind of good stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, so the the kind of fundraiser pre-order is up for that right now. And uh, if you've played or looked at any of the Black Site stuff in the past, you'll know that they are really freaking good at what they do. Uh, and it's all sort of condensed into like little tiny, like two by three, three by three tables with loads of terrain and loads of models and things. So it's proper, lovely narrative RPG style miniature gaming on the tabletop. Can't wait. To see more on this one, I I'm hoping so. somebody starts um, distributing them in the yes, UK or that Europe. That would be nice. Because <laughs> that is the biggest yeah. uh, complaint I see from people about we things like Do it. Look Back yeah. is you, you mm-hmm. can't, for love and money, lay your hands on it uh, yeah. without just getting it shipped from America mm-hmm. uh, and then just mm-hmm. having to, to pay the costs. 
mm-hmm. um, which is a shame because they're they're games that are really interesting and, and sort of deserve a wider audience. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But definitely worth having a look at if you like samurai and you like cooperative gaming. I think that's the big thing there. Doesn't everyone? It's not the whole point. <laughs> What, what else like good is the point in nature? Well, uh, obviously, for sure, it's American Civil War and Soviets. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. Nothing cooperative about that. Eh? Nothing cooperative about any of that. <laughs> Never. But you know. Uh, but yeah. uh, well, right. Shatterpoint, then. It's the yes. game that's killing Star Wars Legion. We assume. Wow. Yes. Uh, the, the game that is making. <laughs> I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to buy up all the Star Wars Legion stuff whenever it goes yeah. to the fire sale. They go, we're not doing this anymore. It's only a matter of time, folks. You all know. Well, we all know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so pre-orders are now available for the new um, Star Wars skirmish game from uh, Atomic Mass Games. Um, they've got a core set and a bunch of other stuff coming out for it. Um, there's very little details on actual gameplay for this at the moment. In fact, I'd say there is scant I, detail. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm still going with its Marvel Crisis Protocol reskinned. As far as as far as we can tell from the things that they've said so far and hinted at, it does feel very much like Marvel Crisis Protocol. Got a lot of tokens and cards and all that kind of stuff uh, thrown into the mix and, and and things like that. And you'll be making small squads, teams that will fight against each other. You can mix and match as much as you like as well. So you could have a Sokotano fighting alongside Darth Maul or whatever if you wanted to as well, uh, which is kind of what they did with with uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol, as mm. you say there, Jerry. But uh, the core set that's coming out uh, will contain um, a Sarge Ventress, Maul, Anakin, uh, Skywalker, and a Sokotano there alongside um, a bunch of the clones including Rex, as you saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also you get the Mandalorians, so you get uh, Bo-Katan and all that kind of good stuff in there as well, which is really nice to see. And you get your kind of tactical droid, <laughs> which I always thought was amazing. <laughs> uh, I always sure. love those guys. But uh, you've also got the, the battle droids in there and stuff. Everyone everyone likes a good B1 battle droid, don't they? Or is it... Well, I mean, droid. I prefer super battle droids, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so yeah. easy to cut up. <laughs> they, they, they showed the flaws... The flaws in yes. and being a car headrest coming up. <laughs> so I don't know why she's in yeah. there. You're dead. You you were dead before he became this. Well, yeah. Um, but, yeah, but, uh, I, I but hate you, new Clone Wars. I hate you so much. I like Clone Wars. Don't, I, love, don't be... I love the Gendy Tarkovsky Clone Wars. That is also good. Where but I also her. like Clone Wars cartoon. But, so. you know. <laughs> yes, but did he kill her? Because um, Obi Wan killed um, what do we call him? Spider Her- Boy. Maul. 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 But he didn't. Yeah. Well, then, he, well, then he did. But yeah, I suppose. But but anyway. So yeah. So the core set's going to come with all of the characters that you see there. So you get your four sort of main characters alongside the Mandalorians and the. Uh, and the battle droids and all that kind of good stuff. Mm. You also get a bunch of terrain and you get everything else that you need to actually play the game. Uh, but beyond that, they've also announced a couple of expansion sets as well. So there's the Hello There uh, squad pack, which is General aptly named, <laughs> which comes with General Kenobi, uh, General Kenobi, alongside Clone Commander Cody, as you can see there, just before he betrays him. Yep. <laughs> and uh, the 212th Clone Troopers as well. Uh, and then the second of the well, actually, we'll have a close look at the the, yeah. the the models there, based on the aesthetic of the Clone Wars cartoons. Um, so they've tried to go with that kind of Saturday morning cartoon vibe for this, so big, punchy action and all that kind of stuff, which obviously vibes with what they did with in the past with Crisis Protocol as well. Uh, but the second of the expansion sets that's coming out alongside the release is Twice the Pride uh, Squad Pack, which comes with uh, Count Dooku there alongside Django Fett before he was beheaded. <laughs> Mm. Uh, and a couple of the Magna Guards as well. Um, you'll note that these look distinctly bigger than your typical uh, model from uh, Atomic Mass Games, and that's because they are. We're looking at these being around the kind of 35 to 40 mil. Oh, so these aren't the same scale to... as no. Legion? No. Legion? These are not no, no. the same scale as Legion, no. Can, uh, can, although... can I just take a moment to just, before we go into the scale yes. sizing, yes. isn't that Django? So why have they then done another Django in a separate box? Why? I think that's because I think that's because there must be a Mandalor- <laughs> there must be a Mandalorian in her crew that looks a lot like is there? Uh, uh, right. Clearly, a pair of Jangos, but it does look a lot like a pair of Jangos. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons why I think Legion's going to end up in a fire sale at some point when they finally just go. Oh, I can't be bothered with doing two of these. We're just going to stick with Star Wars Crisis Protocol. Well, well, uh, yeah. At which point, uh, I'll be able to skip up all the Legion stuff. Yeah. 
but uh, so yes, yeah, so you've got the Count Dooku set there as well, as you're saying, with um, mm. with the Magna Guards. They're also doing the I have the high ground terrain pack uh, mm. and also a set of uh, scattered terrain as well that can be used for Shatterpoint. Um, obviously, a lot of these kind That's of bits nice. and pieces could probably be used for Star Wars Legion because, you yeah. know, rocks are rocks and buildings are buildings. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's thing, obviously, the, you know, the, the swoop bike's probably not going to get used in, in your games of Legion, but otherwise, I think everything else would probably quite work nicely. Mm. Um, all of this is available, as I say, to pre order right now. Uh, would be available to uh, to pick up, and I think it's getting a first outing as demos at Adepticon, so not too far away. And then the actual full release of the game is going to be in the summer. Um, as I say, you know, pre-orders out for a game, but still no gameplay. Uh, and they said they're going to be discussing it through articles and stuff like that. I would have thought that we would have had a lot more videos on this by now, um, it, it explaining me to get a little bit more that- detail, but. Uh, the internet people say about computer games, no pre-orders. <laughs> yeah, pre-orders yeah. only encourages people. That's true. Uh, yes. Wait until you actually see what you're getting before uh-huh. you buy it. Yeah, uh, and I think when you've got Star Wars Crisis Protocol there, um, mm. named after Mace Windu model or book, uh, and doesn't have a Mace Windu model in it, <laughs> that that offends yeah. me to the very core <laughs> of my being. Don't yeah. call it Shatterpoint unless Mace Windu's front and center. I'm mm, going true, full true. Vapad on some, <laughs> on some fibro shield wielding lunatic yeah. on his home planet. Uh-huh. That's that's what I wanted, but no. None of that. So yeah, I mean, obviously, if it does have a lot of the basis of Crisis Protocol, then obviously that's a good system. We, mm. You know, it's a lot of fun. But uh, as as you say, Jerry, I would wait until we see gameplay articles and videos on this game before you dive into it. But if it is, um, if it is like Legion Crisis exists, Protocol, it's, yeah, it's going to be very different from Legion. Yeah. So if you already yeah. like Legion, um, then yeah the the whole the whole idea of going oh, i just want to play with these figures so mm-hmm. i'm going to have dooku and maul and ahsoka tano and yeah. you know obi-wan team up to attack some clone command and you're just going why what who <laughs> oh, just uh, no just don't cross the streams keep people in their own distinct factions yeah. like they're supposed to be <laughs> It's not that's like it's I'll not like it. the Marvel comics where people were forever jumping yeah. around all over the place. So you can go, well, that's, that's you know that, that person's been mind controlled. That's why Black mm. Widow is working with them this week. Uh, mm. It just it, it it just seems a bit muddy as far as the concept. But you know, maybe I'll be proved wrong mm. by Star Wars Crisis Protocol. All right, so that's a big galvy bucket load of news, and now we're going to take a deep, relaxing look at some Luke battle mats. <laughs> Hi guys, and another look at the latest from Loke Battle Mats. Um, uh, so they had the Giant Book of Battle Mats, the Castles, Crypts and Caverns, and then the one that we're going to look at today, the Box of Adventure. Let me move these out of the way. The Box of Adventure, let me grab, Jerry has my notes that I have to hit, okay? So the Box of Adventure, Jerry says... Five sheets of tokens. Let me turn it over and you can have a quick look. Five sheets of tokens, 300 plus NPCs, all individuals, four sizes, humanoid, large, giant, and boss. They're color-coded and numbered to help track stats and wounds. This is a focus on pirates and bandits and sea monsters. Uh, 24 modular wipe clean battle mats and you can lay them down individually or group them together Um, the maps will cover the essential terrain as we're about to see and the box can be used either as a map or as a dice tray and there's a code in it to redeem a free digital copy what i like about these sets is that they are beautiful accompaniments to um, the actual uh, battle maps, uh, big, big books of battle maps, because they have all that extra lovely goodness in it. So, open it up. Ta-da! Your adventure starts here. So, here we have our map index, but more importantly, let's get stuck into this pile of stuff here. So, you have your little drawstring, and there you have... What Jerry says is an ideal dice tray. Do you know what? 
I think the man's right. I think it is an ideal dice tray. We will pop that there. Right, so let's get stuck in. Okay, so here we are into the various tokens. So these are your non-player characters and uh, bosses, monsters. So nautical themed. So you can see you have a Kraken kind of character. You have your uh, water giant, a big ass whale. Um, uh, through to various kind of pirates and uh, and the likes. So you basically just cut these bad boys out. Get yourself a wee knife or a wee pair of scissors and you can chop them out. And they are, in fact, double-sided, but different things on each side. So if we have a look at this skull here, floating skull of doom, it's actually a dude here. And on the other side, we can see some of the other beasties. So even more kind of beasties, a more kind of a dragony kind of beast, big ass crocodile, and a killer frog, because we all need a killer frog in our lives. Right. Then into the maps. So we have lots and lots of different kind of uh, maps to choose from. So let's Start of a looking a look through them. So here we have your shipwreck um, and unwrecked. Ooh, and uh, an actual what do we call it there as well? Um, a raft. Once again, I'd be yeah, I'd be inclined to actually just cut that out and just use these as set on pieces. Um, once again, all of this stuff just looks to me like it's primed for cutting out to set on to some of the larger battle maps. So, if you want to sight a little house or something like that somewhere, here we have yet more of the beasties, various kind of sharks, lots of NPCs, and then on the other side, more gators. Really nice. Really nice. Selection of rooftops. And then on the other side, you flip them over and you're into a house. You could do a very interesting kind of Assassin's Creed kind of a thing with that, um, where you have the, the rooftops and your characters are moving from rooftop to rooftop. And then whenever they get down in, you can flip it over and you have space to, to, to look at. Here we have the beginnings of our maps. So the maps themselves are bifolds. So there you go, like a little bay kind of a thing going on there, which is quite interesting. Or you could have it that it's almost like a double, like a, a shore kind of a thing. Um, here we have the beginnings of a ship. So once again, you could have your ship actually lined up there. And then what else have we got that looks like it marries in with that? Um, ooh, that's quite interesting. So you could have some kind of um, thing going on where you're coming out to a ship and some water and the bay. Yeah, I can see how all that goes together. And then on the other side, you have your standard fare kind of dungeon-y crawler kind of stuff. So that's your standard kind of hero quest Dungeon crawler, nice, plain. The key here is there's not too much detail on these because the detail is what you can pull out of these when you cut all these wee bits and pieces up and pop them down. So let me leave those maps to the side. There we have on the other side of that one, um, your kind of lagoon, your dark lagoon kind of a thing. Right, so what have we got here? Some more of the Black Lagoon. And then on the other side, you have the beginnings of uh, a town 
on a township. Here we have a continuation of the township into your kind of like your your square. And on the other side of those continues more of the lagoon kind of stuff. So loads of options that way. On the town side, we have more. We have the church. Oh, very nice, actually. Your nice church shape. You could do something. You could do something horror themed with that. Uh, then into a crypt. Oh, we're back into the real kind of graveyardy kind of thing here. And then on the other side of those, we have the beginnings of what look like uh, caverns with them um, with flowing water, which is nice. Let's put that to this side. Continuation of the township with the graveyard. Look at that. That is nice. And then on the other side, some more of that kind of caverny stuff, but now starting to open up into the under realms of whatever palace or tower or whatever you can imagine not being connected to. Um, finally, last of your lagoon bits with the broken bridge and then some more of that township that we had been looking at for an exploration around the town. Now, one of the interesting things is, remember I was talking about that rooftop idea for the, you're almost your Assassin's Creed kind of a thing? So there, your rooftops, when you cut them out, will fit beautifully over the top of some of these little houses. If I grab the other rooftops, wherever I set them, here, that one will fit there, and that one will fit nicely there, and that one will fit there. So what you would have is rooftop, first floor, ground floor. That's if you sleep at the bottom. You might sleep at the bottom. It's entirely up to you how you run that. So yeah, you cut all these bits out, and then that gives you some nice ability to cover that up. I really like that. I really like that. That is giving a nice additional dimension to the whole thing, which makes even a play area that small, it adds a lot of extra explorability to that. So let's just say you had a Rangers of Shadow Deep style affair where your objectives are in each of those rooms. But you don't know exactly what's in them because at the, to begin with, they're all just roofs. And then you flip them over and they have to work their way either down or up. That would work just as well. So that would be your kind of ground floor and then out of the ground floor and up into the top floor. Lots of different ways you could work that. And like I said, very simple idea, but it adds so much to a small play space so you're not having to sprawl it out. You can keep your players nice and contained, which means that you're keeping your players closer to the action and you're adding some useful constraints for yourself as a GM um, to, to keep the storyline tighter, to keep the action levels higher, and to keep the players more engaged um, rather than seeing them spiral off into various different directions. That, that is very interesting. I'm going to explore that more as well. And that we've already covered is our beasties but once again a pair of scissors is your friend when you have this whole box set and that as they say is that very useful additional piece book sized as well so nice and easy to transport fits well with um your standard big book style if you wanted to have a few extra maps or whatever to go with it 
and yeah, fit in a backpack, take it along, or in my case, this is the stuff that sits in my dining room because um, sometimes it's just nice to have stuff at hand when you finished your tea and you want to keep the kids occupied so that your much better half can go and relax somewhere and you keep them all together. Having this little box set of stuff in the dining room, you go, kids, I'm taking you on an adventure. And if you want to go on an adventure, check out the big box of adventure from Loke Battle Mats. And yeah, while you're there, indulge yourself in the reams of other things that they have that are compatible and work beautifully with it. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. That's some very nice stuff from Luke there. Mm -hmm. uh, to round out the show, we have some Kickstarter campaigns. Uh, but before we get into the new ones, uh, I thought we'd very briefly jump back to the Batman uh, escape from Arkham Asylum mm, game. Because yeah. we, were, we were trying to work out what size the minis were. And I was guesstimating that the uh, basing looked like they would probably fit on their standard bases, even like little base toppers. And lo and behold, I'm right. So they threw out uh, a little, <laughs> little thing. So the purple ones are the prototype miniatures for the right. escape from Arkham. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the greyish ones are their uh, standard sort of CO cast miniatures ones. And as you can see, the, the bases they come on for the game fit mm -hmm. into their round lip bases. It uh, was which all part of the plan. It was there all part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were wondering about that for the escape from Arkham Asylum, because there's a whole whole host of stuff in there. Some stuff... Oh, that crowdfunder's doing really well, actually. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. Some stuff already exists, obviously, on the app, but it does mean that, like we were saying, if, if you're looking to play the Batman miniatures game, you can get a load of miniatures from this that'll be one piece and you won't have to... Um, and you'll be able to use them in it. Yeah. yeah you can use, use some use, really yeah. cool poses as well. As we have a yeah, you can just jump so, straight yeah. in, grab that, yeah. grab the uh, the app, and away you go, because then you don't have to pick up anything. Yeah, and you probably have to find the, the ruler set, but let's face it, getting rulers and templates and tokens are really easy. So <laughs> if you're yeah. interested in... Uh, in Arkham Asylum and the escaping therein and not getting face planted by Batman, uh, uh -huh. then play Bane. I think it's generally the way that one goes. High behind, <laughs> high behind Shay. That's key to victory. High behind the wall of muscle. Yeah. That is one hundred percent. That's not Bane we're talking about. That's just Shay. It's the <laughs> yeah, wall yeah. of muscle. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, does he even lift? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. He does. <laughs> so uh, our Kickstarter campaigns for this week. Then we are going to be mm. kicking off with. A touch of the end times. Yeah. The old Ragnarok A. Yeah. yeah, so Ragnarok Miniatures uh, from Colin Patton. Um, I, I kind of have to include these Kickstarters because every single time they come up, Lloyd's like, have you seen this one? <laughs> yes, he does, yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is the new one from Ragnarok Miniatures, and uh, Lloyd will be very disappointed that he's not had to look at it as well, I suppose. But yeah, there's no yeah. Vikings in this one, I guess. Or, well, I suppose at least they're Titchy Vikings. The titchy Vikings. So mm -hmm. this is their new collection of Durin's Folk. Vikings. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so this is their set of uh, new fantasy dwarves that get added to their expanding well ever expanding collection uh, of miniatures that have kind of got that kind of norse anglo-saxon kind of dark age vibe to them but also with that fantasy twist mm. uh, and there's also a good heavy dollop of uh, tolkien in there as well hence really? my interest in such a uh... you surprised me ben <laughs> who would have thought it right mm. um so yeah so this uh new project comes with the models for King Durin himself, alongside a selection of command figures, which come with the big banners and stuff. Um, you don't actually get the banners themselves. You have to go and print those off yourselves, but you know, I'm sure you can find them somewhere Silly. online. Uh, and then you also get a selection of the regular troops as well. Um, all of these dwarves are designed for a little bit of mountain fighting, so they come with their big, heavy, double-handed axes, as you can see there. And there can't are call them Dian axes, can we? Because there's, there's no <laughs> deeds. What's uh, yeah. Dunedin? <laughs> <laughs> Dinner and axes. Dune and Dana. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Uh so yeah, so you've got a bunch of them uh with them wielding them two-handed as if they're about to burst through the shield wall. Then you've got um, other options that can be ranked up and all that kind of good stuff as well if you want to, with their shields at the ready. I like uh, these. They're like um 
mattocks. They are like mattocks rather than yeah. axes, yeah, which I think is really cool. Which makes sense um, for dwarves. Exactly, yeah. yeah. They often get said that they wield mattocks, don't they? So, yeah. um, so it's a really nice selection of new miniatures. I think there's around 32 of them in total that you can get your hands on. Uh, but the other thing that's really awesome about this is that if you like the look of mm. King Durin and his dwarven folk, they've also added a pledge option where you can add on a goblin army as well. So if you want to fight out uh, your battles in the heart of Moria and Kazakhum, yeah then you can do that. Or if you just want to get stuck into a good old-fashioned fantasy battle between dwarves and goblins, you can do that. Those so, goblins yeah. are absolutely spanking. The goblins are possibly some of their best stuff. Mm. Um, I know a lot of people have picked them up and used them to make Oathmark armies in particular. Um, and again, they've gone with the vibe of trying to make them uh, as g- generically uh, fantasy as possible, generically but also, fantasy, but also yeah. very Norse. That they, they yes, are yes. based on that whole dark elf feel. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah they're really nice, and you've got a mix of um, armored and cloaked and cowled, or just mm-hmm. loincloth, yep. depending, yeah. I suppose, on your your societal rank. Exactly. Yeah, you know, higher up in rank, you go yeah. less clothes you need. You can do your you can do your goblin town, but you could also do your armies of Bolg at the Last Alliance and all that kind. Of, not Last Alliance, the Battle of Five Armies and all that kind of good stuff. Then, if you uh, say yeah. so, if you say so. so yeah. I really like um, <laughs> the king there as well. Seems to be wearing a Sutton Who style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, helm as and well. The other thing that's really nice, um, you can tell in some of the detail in the pictures we've got over on the on a on our tabletop. Yeah. But, the actual detail work on the helmets is great. So you have all the little lines and filigree and all that kind of thing. So when you're going to be applying washes and stuff to this, it, they're just going to pop um, when you get them on the tabletop. So it's a, it's a really awesome little collection. The other nice thing, just weird little ran- random touches. All the shields have got like uh, sort of cut marks and dents and mm. stuff in them. So it looks like they've been fighting for ages down in the tunnels. Um, so it's a really nice little selection of, uh, of miniatures for you to using your game it's nice to see them all there because i know he dropped one when he was painting them up he did yes <laughs> i had to go back and repress just like oh yeah. i've done an immeasurable harm to this model and needs to be painted up yeah. again from scratch uh-huh. to get the photos done but yeah. yeah so the ragnarok miniatures range as a whole um because there are a lot more models in the collection uh unfortunately the website's not available at the moment but if you go over to their facebook page hmm. i'll put links down below for all of this stuff so you'll be able to go and do it you go to their Facebook page, there's a big gallery with everything in it and all the prices, and you simply just email them to get your hands on the miniatures, essentially. So yeah, very really cool. What? Stuff. You don't you don't fill in a wee handwritten form and pop it in the post with a postal <laughs> order in you. Send it off. I'm sure you could do that. <laughs> um, I'm not sure whether or not Colin wants to give out his address just yet. But, uh, <laughs> it's already really a matter of time. Otherwise, Lloyd will be around. That's, uh, yes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always going to be the way of it. Um, yeah. 20 days left on that. And if you like that style of things as well, uh, Colin's been sculpting for years, so there's a, a lot of dwarves and humans Back catalog and, yeah a lot with, of it was picked various, up by warlord was it I think warlord it was? picked up yeah. the vikings and anglo-saxons he sculpted mm-hmm. stuff for conqueror so he already yes. has a, a large yeah. range of dwarves in a similar style um which means you can really go for the whole fantasy norse thing in a big way yeah. yep. uh, or you know saga for example it works for that <laughs> gotta get it in there uh, it in. don't have to but i'm contractually but obliged will. to this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right uh so yes we have another Kickstarter, and this time we're going under the sea, like Sea yeah. Lab. Under the sea. Uh, so, Sorry, how to do it? <laughs> <laughs> so this is for one that we previewed a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is from Antimatter Games, who a lot of people will know do the Deep Wars um, war game. Uh, well, this is their new kind of, essentially like a starter set, really, to dive in and have fun with the game called Sunken Citadel. Uh, and this comes with two um, sets of resin miniatures, which represent the Breach Team Fortune Hunters and also the wily Underwater Invaders as well. Uh, and it's uh, designed as a skirmish game where you're, as Jerry was saying, going to be fighting underwater, which means a whole bunch of quirky and interesting mechanics and stuff um, for fighting down in the depths. Uh, it's not just your typical standard sort of and it gives you the perfect opportunity to go to your local pet store exactly. to buy your terrain possibly <laughs> the easiest game to buy terrain for 
Square, Very everything so, you yeah. have for an aquarium. Thank oh, you. It, it's it's yeah. it, and it's beautiful too because you go to your pet store, you just buy a whole load of aquarium stuff, stick it on a table, and then put a UV black light above it. Yes, and yeah. you're sorted. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the cool thing about this one is that they as I say, they designed it as a starter set effectively if you did either don't have fun with the game. Um, you can either get the, a boxed version of the game, so you can get it all physically printed and sent out to you with resin miniatures and all that kind of good stuff. You get the, um, the, the map tiles that you saw as well there too. Um, or you can go down the route of getting the entirely printable version of the game. So you can dive in and get... All of the models as STL files um, alongside t- extra terrain elements that have been done by LV425 uh, design, 427 design, sorry. Um, so you can add those into your collection as well, and you can just basically print it all off at home if you don't want to, uh, you know, get a big box um, through your post, through your post box. Um, the other nice thing about it as well, so obviously you've got the, um, the, the breach team fortune hunters and the invaders and things so you've got your weird strange underwater um, Nautilus <laughs> ripping somebody apart yeah this uh, there's also all of those wild animals that you see there included um uh, goblin shark the, so <laughs> not enough not enough goblin sharks in games exactly. these days i feel yeah I feel like there true. were a lot more goblin sharks in games whenever i was a kid mm-hmm. or maybe yeah. i'm just projecting <laughs> so if you um if you dive down into the ocean and uh you think that everything's going to be fine because you've dealt with all of the invaders oh no it isn't because the wild animals under the sea are also going to be hunting you down and trying to rip you to pieces as well because you're in their domain so a whole lot of commotion under the ocean <laughs> exactly yes <laughs> under the sea uh, so Deep Wars as a game has been around for uh, a very long time, alongside the Shadow Sea um, world as well that they've they've also worked on, um, and it's kind of getting a little bit of a, re- of a resurgence now with the mm. advent of three D printing and that kind of stuff. So they've moved into offering a lot of their new models and a lot of their old existing ranges, STL files and things, so you can go and pick them up. And this is essentially just them being like, hey, guys, we're here. Come and check us out. <laughs> Maybe give this a go because it's a very, very different style of game. Uh, I think we had a, did we have a Let's Play of this a very long time ago on the channel? Where I think oh, Dawn very and very long Ch- time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some time ago now, so, yeah. Um, I'll see if I can dig it out, if I can dig it out. Mm. I'll see if I can add it yeah. in, because it'll give you all the vibes of what you, yeah. what you uh, yeah. expect from the game. So, yeah, very cool. But, yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how this goes, especially with branching out into the, <clears throat> the STLs as well. Yes. Yeah. Which I believe the mm-hmm. kids love these days. They're all about that. <laughs> all right, Shay? Correct, yes, correct. Yeah, <laughs> why, why, why have something physically where you can just have it on a thumb drive and think about printing it? Yeah, ju- yeah you just it like it just yeah. yeah, you just think about yeah, think that, I own it ish. <laughs> that's, that's I do really like that. I really like yeah. the obviously the invaders are unusually creepy and have mm. a touch of the old uh, Cthulhu about them. Mm. So I'm, I'm, yep. I'm always a fan of something from space corrupting, mm. uh, but just the actual regular sea creatures just in there cracking one off. Uh, yes, or <laughs> gobbling around the place. It's all yes, good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're really, really that's nice. the exact right. Um, for their seventeen reason. days left on that one, was there? Seventeen days left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so plenty of time to get in if you fancy going down. Right, I feel like that's us done for a Friday night. Yep, I think so. <laughs> I'm I'm spent. Feels that way. <laughs> so uh, we will return. Same bad time, same bad channel next week. But if that's mm-hmm. too far away, why not come over on Sunday morning and join us for the relaxing XLBS with our Cult of Games members. Yes. Uh, if you're not already a cultist, you can become one for the cheap, cheap price of nothing for 30 days. After that, we'll start taking all your money off you. But for 30 less days, than a price of a coffee, and it keeps the show running. Mm-hmm. So, are we going to have to do this post credit scene? With all of our Cult of Games members as producers. Maybe that would that, 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 we, we would do that. Lloyd, Lloyd's going to punch me now. <laughs> even that. <laughs> text, you say. Not in this lifetime. Yeah. Right. Until next week, folks, have a great week of gaming. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.